Okay, so today we would like to talk about combustion testing and the steps that are involved in combustion testing. And we will use uh, a wet, wet uh, combustion test because it's more common and it's more durable and also it is does not need a lot of ca uh, calibration. So what are the steps that are involved in performing a combustion test? Uh, the first thing you have to bring your tools into the shop or the garage where you have the boiler and make sure they are stabilized. By stabilized meaning that they are the room temperature, they're not too cold, they're not too hot, and that most of the equipment are in running condition. So the first thing we can do is uh, test the equipment, give the draft test, make sure it's on a level place, level one kind of ground, make sure it's okay, yeah, it's on zero, and move the hose a little bit to make sure that it's moving as we try to put it back in. Uh, second thing is make sure that you have an operable, calibrated uh, thermometer. And check your uh, carbon dioxide down low or hourglass and make sure it's at that level. Uh, so, okay, we'll start with the, with the steps first thing. We'll make sure the uh, equipment is uh, stabilized check the equipment, make sure we have enough fluid in the hourglass. It's at zero here, and I hope you can see it, that it's at zero. And when it's stabilized, make sure you have a smoke test, and the smoke test actually is pulling some air, and the hose is uh, in good condition. Make sure you have enough testing paper for the smoke test, that is testing paper. So it's the uh, testing paper over here. It's very clear and it's specialized testing paper. And this is my uh, pump for the smoke test. Uh, then you also need to know that you will need a pump to pump combustion air into the CO2 tester. So this is the pump, make sure it has no cracks. This is going to go into the chamber, so make sure we pump it, pumping air into this end and pulling air from the, the suction line. So this is the chamber. So the first thing we said, check the equipment, make sure the temperature is stable, and then we can proceed with the test. So in terms of the steps, I have a sheet here. The first thing you have to do before you start the test is make sure there is no smoke, because there is no point on doing combustion testing for uh, a burner that, that is not running efficiently and have burning with a lot of smoke. Smoke is caused by too much air or too little air. So how we perform a smoke test, the first thing you do is you get a small piece of testing paper, you insert it in the slot over here, tie it up, and you place this plunger, the stick, in the hole at the breech. Again, most of our combustion analysis are done from the breech side. The only thing that you will have to test over the fire is the draft. So you will use the smoke test and pump this slowly 10 times. Hold it only three, four, five. If you pull it too hard, it will break. This was designed to break at too much pressure. 10. And of course, because I'm not using actual combustion test, it's going to be clear. If it's completely clear, you might want to reduce the air a little bit on the burner. And how do we reduce the air? I have a complete burner here. And what I do is I'll reduce the air from this air band over here. You can see it. So I will change the air band until I get some smoke. I'll go full again 10 times until I get some smoke and put it back again to zero. The reason we do that is we want to make sure we're not burning to lean. Uh, how do we know how much smoke we have? We use the test uh, sheet for the smoke. And you can see it's from zero all the way to five. I'll put it in the projector. So you compare whatever smoke dot you got with those numbers. And as you can 
can see here, the smoke should be between zero and two. That's acceptable. We're aiming for zero. Anything above three is unacceptable. So we did the, we did the smoke test as the first step. Second thing, we tried to test the draft. So the draft is basically how much battery, how much air are we pulling from the system. So uh, we take the draft from two, two locations. That's gonna be one over the chamber, over the chamber, and that measurement, you can see it's over here. So it's for the draft over the fire uh, at, the, and at the bridge. And we do everything three times just to make sure we have consistency. And if, the, if we get over the draft, over the fire between 0 0.02, that's the difference between them. So you subtract those two numbers. I should be between 0 0.02 and 0 0.015. That's a really good difference between the chamber and the draft. If it's too, uh, if it's more than, it's, if it's still between 0 0.05, that's okay. If it's more than less than 0.01, there's not enough draft. Probably the chimney is clogged. And if you have too much draft, that means something is wrong with the heat exchanger. And uh, also, you want to make sure that there's no power venter. If you have a power venter, of course, your, your draft will go crazy and it will be too high. So make sure that you are doing the measurement for natural draft, not uh, power venter and you subtract the two numbers to get those differences here. Uh, next step, temperature is the third thing. We will stick this on the burner at the breech. There's a hole, you leave that in the hole, and may wait for it to stabilize. Whatever number we get, once uh, it's uh, stabilized, we will do the next step, temperature, and we do it again, take it out, put it back again, and uh, it should be around 300 or 400. And that says net, not gross. So net will be whatever number we get from the thermometer. Uh, subtract, we, we will subtract the ambient temperature. We set that around 50 and 70. So we subtract that number we get from the thermometer and that will be your net stack temperature. The third thing you will do is, uh, so these are the steps down here. I'll put them down here. Uh, I'm sure I'll write it down on the paper. So the steps will be as follows. First of all, we'll do smoke test. Second is draft test. Third is temperature, net, and fourth will be, we'll do the CO2 test. CO2 test along with the temperature will give us the actual combustion efficiency. So how is that done? So make sure this is stabilized and mixed properly, and you will use the plunger here. We, we press against the top, this will be hanging on the breech. Press on the top and you pump 18 times slowly. Okay, you mix it slowly at a 45 degree angle. Make sure that you mix all the combustion air with the liquid. Do not press while you mix it because that will allow the CO2 to escape. So we mix that again. And uh, when you do actual combustion testing, this temperature here will rise. I mean, this number here will rise from zero to whatever number you get. So whatever number you get from here. So you start with zero. You start with zero because there is no CO in the, in the hourglass. And once we pump some CO2 and mix it, it will rise up to whatever number is here, and we're in the number. So we do that three times, and we record the number. So we want something between 10 and 14 percent. You can see here it says percent. And that will be your stack temperature, I mean the CO2 uh, measurement. So let's say we got, uh, I'll put some random numbers here. So let's say we got the stack number of 10, 400, and I got uh, CO2. As 10 and have recorded the numbers here. Uh, how do I get the efficiency? So I use a slider ruler, ruler, like, uh, ruler and I'll put the window here at uh, 400. 
100. And I'll slide this down to 10%. And reading that, that will give me 82% efficiency. I'll write that here, and I'll do it three times again. Write down 82%, which is in the good range. Uh, a very fair new boiler will give you around like 90% efficiency. It's an old boiler, probably mid 70s or 75, which is acceptable, it's very old. So this are the steps to a combustion uh, test. And let me just reiterate. Uh, what would you do if you have uh, smoke temperature of zero, right off the bat, you will go and increase the air or decrease the air, make sure you have some smoke, then go back to the zero smoke, make sure you're burning at the right percentage. Uh, Second thing, the temperature at the start should be around 350 to 400, it could be 500. You don't want the stack temperature to be lower than 350 because that will mean that you are burning low and you're not absorbing, uh, you're burning low and there's a lot of heat escaping in the heat, uh, heat exchanger and that will lead you to have condensation in that stack. And that is going to be very corrosive for your boiler. You don't want to also burn too high if you have over 600, that means you are not absorbing a lot of heat from your boiler. Uh, what else? If you have to low temperature, it means there's a lot of, uh, there's incomplete combustion and bad combustion in the chamber. If it's too high, that means that you are not absorbing something uh, of all the heat you need from the heat exchanger. Uh, if you look at the flame, you can, it's really hard to look at the flame sometimes in the newer boilers, but uh, if the flame is impinging on some of the walls, probably the, somebody has changed the nozzle or something has been wrong, done wrong with the pumping pressure or the amount of air, and that flame impingement on the wall will cause you to have some smokes. Uh, for, as, far for, uh, as far as for pressure, once you turn the boiler on and you do the combustion testing, you want to test the limits, and you're going to test the pressure that uh, in the system, if you have a steam system, it should be around 2 psi and you want to test the low water cutoff function and also the uh, you want to make sure that the aquastat will cut off at the high temperature otherwise you don't go and do some further investigation so yeah these are the steps to do some combustion testing if you look at the blackboard there are some info information regarding the, the sheet and the numbers you're supposed to be getting so first just to iterate smoke test draft test co2 temperature and efficiency and that will give you complete uh, combustion test for the uh, for a gas or oil burn all right thank you